um, you know, proud of our team that we were able to handle our business today here at home, uh, sitting here 4-0, earning an opportunity uh, for a big game coming up here this Friday here at the Shell. And, um, you know, to, I respect winning enough that obviously I'm visibly disappointed that we haven't played to the standard. But I definitely want to give our team credit that we're sitting here 4-0 and, and we're disappointed. So that means that we're heading in the right direction. Uh, we got a locker room full of guys that are happy we won, but not happy with the way we played. And uh, we know we can play better. My job to get us to play better and we'll, we'll get that thing turned around. Obviously it was a sloppy game with the penalties, the drops, uh, you know, on both phases there at the end of the half. We just didn't finish the way I wanted us to, but I felt we played strong in the second half. I thought our team came out, we've uh, made some of the adjustments, we brought a little more energy. I thought we started out a little lethargic as a team and I thought the second half we played better. Um, we could have played better, but as I told our team, you know, winning is hard. It is hard to, to win ball games in this league uh, and being in the Big Ten, as well as you know, playing a team like Kent State that came in and, and were battle tested against two top ten teams. Uh, obviously, our defense gave up some yardage this this week. But what I did appreciate and like about how we played defense this week was a uh, third down and, and, and didn't get down to score touchdowns in the red area, which uh, we improved from last week. You know, once again, I thought our quarterback uh, really showed command. I thought our quarterback, uh, you know, obviously threw for over 300 yards for the, you know, third, fourth straight game, however many games it is, playing at a high level. And obviously the turnover there with the, the tipped interception, you know, it was disappointing there, but, uh, you know, he's been incredibly efficient at running what we want to get run on offense. And I think he'll continue to get better. Um, the normal 24-hour rule, obviously, is, is cut in half now. We've got to come back in again tomorrow, which is typically their day off, and, and we've got to put this game behind us, get it cleaned up, and start on our uh, Iowa prep tomorrow night. And so with that, I'll open it up to questions. Thanks for bringing your hand question. We'll start with the lead from the back. Coach, uh, two parts. One, do you have an update about Ben Jennings? And then two, how much did his loss affect the game? Um, no update on Brandon Jess yet. I know they took him in. Um, he didn't return. Um, we're, we obviously, are getting a little thin there because we wound up losing uh, number 11, uh, Ruben there in the second half as well. But what it did was it gave us an opportunity to play players like Kobe Thomas, who came in and uh, really played at a high level for us. And here's a guy that didn't get a lot of work uh, all week long, but he was prepared to go out and play when his opportunity in turn came. So I was really proud to see uh, Kobe go out and operate the way he did. But, don't have much information on any of the injuries from uh, the game just yet. Uh, oh, Jesus, left. Hey, coach. Um, you know, you were able to kind of rotate a lot of guys in there, particularly on offense. You had 12 different receivers make a catch. What does that kind of speak to your depth on that side of the ball and how you can kind of rotate anyone in there and they can still get the job done? Well, I wouldn't say we can rotate anyone in there. It's not that easy. But what it says to me is that we've got a lot of confidence and the players that we have there in the receiver room. Um, you know, it's great to have that type of depth. I mean, if you look at our schedule, uh, how it was laid out for us the last couple of weeks. I mean, you got a Friday game, you finish with a late game, you come back, have a Saturday, and then we're back to a Friday game. And so as we prepare, uh, we have to take all those things into account. And, uh, you know, it becomes kind of a uh, compound interest when you play your starters a lot of plays, and then all of a sudden, you got those guys out there for 80 plays and you got to turn around and practice tomorrow. So we went in with the plan that we would have to play a lot of players. Uh, our coaches did a great job of getting those you know, inexperienced guys prepared to play the game. Um, today was a little more sloppier than what I would have liked, but you know, based off of how our schedule kind of was laid out, uh, we, we needed to play a lot of players so that we could uh, you know, keep ourselves in position to continue to compete. You mentioned Talia's command of the offense, and, and when things are going well and efficiently on offense, like what are the common threads that you notice as to as to what enables that to happen? Um, we don't beat ourselves. You know, I call them self-inflicted wounds. When we don't have drops, penalties, sacks, fumbles, interceptions, uh, we're pretty good on offense. But when you look at, we call it our margin of error. And if you look at us on offense today, with the drops we've had, we had, I thought our O line did a better job of keeping the quarterback from sacks. 
Uh, not sure about how many offensive penalties there were just yet, but I would venture to say, uh, you know, we didn't necessarily play without on offense without beating ourselves. Um, when, we, when we eliminate the self-inflicted ones, we got a chance to be pretty good on offense, and we feel like we've got a quarterback that can, can lead us. Hey, Mike, congrats on the win. What's up, thanks. Um, looking at the running backs, you had, I think, four backs with at least, you know, a handful of carries. Um, Chow and Fatma, too, got some early playing time. Are, are you just kind of still looking for a rotation there? Or, you know, what was the reason for some of you guys playing? And how do you think they all performed getting in there? Yeah, I mean, we've always played a lot of backs around here. Um, I just think the way the game play, the way the game plays out and uh, being consistent with what we talked about, developing our team, um, you know, Fleet Davis is our guy. Um, he's the guy that's going to get the brunt of the workload. Um, obviously, we've had Isaiah Jacobs, and you know he's been nursing a turf toe, and so because of that, we've had to get some other guys ready. You know, Challen is one of those uh, seasoned veteran players, even though he's been around here only two years, but uh, one of those guys that can get us out of a spell, get us out of a jam there, and, and and be a productive player as we saw today. And then you know we've been really pleased with the way Kobe. Donald has come on for us. Uh, we saw it in training camp. And we've made a commitment that we were going to play him. Uh, and, you know, we talk about it as a staff um, based off of my direction, how many plays I want to see players play because I've got to look at the macro view of this thing. And, you know, it's a long season. Um, injuries pile up. And we've got to have experienced players. And the only way to get better is by playing. So that's, that's our thought behind it. Coach, back here again. Um, you mentioned earlier you guys you mentioned earlier you guys are 4-0 for the first time since 2016, haven't played up to your standards. This is foreign territory for a lot of everyone on the team right now. How do you not let it get to their heads, not let themselves get ahead as you also prepare for another tough Big Ten opponent? I think you just put the tape on. I mean, you know, it, it's 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 a privilege to be here sitting 4-0. Don't, don't, get, it, don't get me wrong. Uh, as disappointed as I am, it's because I know we're capable of being able to play like and I know these kids put in the work uh, Monday through Friday. And, you know, we've got to get some things cleaned up. But uh, I respect winning enough that we're sitting here 4-0 with a great opportunity against one of our top teams in our league here at home. And my expectation is that, you know, we sell this thing out with our fans. Uh, we create that environment that we're going to need. Uh, you know, maybe follow the lead of what our volleyball team did. And shout out to the volleyball team for a great job yesterday. But we've earned this opportunity, and uh, we got to get some things corrected. And, and I, I know, based off the leadership that this, this team has shown, uh, we'll get it corrected and be ready to go Friday. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, what does this game do for you in terms of answering your question of uh, discipline? And, uh... Uh, it, it doesn't do much because we didn't show a lot of it today. You know. I'm okay, as I've said, with uh, the pre-snap penalty or the, the in the middle of the play penalties, holding and you know pass interference. All those things are hard to to guard against, but it's the end of the play penalties and those pre-snap penalties that really are irritating for us as a coach. And you know, at some point, we got to get this thing fixed. And it's been uh, an Achilles heel. It's been an issue. I keep talking about it every week, so uh, we'll, we'll continue to. To, to coach them through it, um, you know, that's the deal with 18 to 22 year olds. Uh, you got to draw the line in the sand and not back off of it. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do some discipline things for guys that play undisciplined. You're right, Dave. Coach, red zone defense this evening, they had seven trips inside for 20. They only were able to get come out of it with one touchdown. Uh, what was your impression with how you got it? What was the key for your impression of this evening? And how encouraging is it to see that effort from those guys with their backs to the uh, goalposts. Yeah, it was really encouraging to see the red zone defense stand up that way. You know, our defense gave up some explosive plays that we talk about. Uh, we created, I think, just one turnover. Um, and so to me, the recipe for winning for us is on offense, executing enough to get explosive plays, which I thought early in the game we made some, uh, and then don't turn it over, and then defensively limiting them. And they hit more explosive plays probably than we saw all year. But we knew they had a great quarterback. We knew they ran a vertical passing game that we would be challenged. Um, you know, but to be able to, to stand up in the red area and hold them to field goals and keep them out of there from touchdowns uh, talks a lot about the character of our defense. They maybe they bend it a little bit, but they didn't break, and they really helped helped us on the offensive side to maintain some of that momentum. Ryan, in the second row. Uh, 
Hey, Coach. Staying on the topic of defense, um, I just want to get your overall thoughts on how the secondary handled the speed of Kent State's receivers. You know, um, and I know you guys hate, and I hate saying I got to see the tape, but uh, it's a little tough. You know, I looked up and I saw guys maybe not in the best, what we call, phase position. Um, a lot of trail, and when we're playing main coverage, we typically don't want to be in the trail variety unless we got a safety over the top. And so, again, this quarterback, as we said, was a, one of the better quarterbacks that we'll face this year. Uh, you know, they've got some speed at the receiver position. They challenged us. Uh, obviously, we're dealing with, uh, again, some depth issues there at the corner position. Um, hopefully, we can get some guys back, um, get some guys healthy. Uh, defensively, they played, I think, 80 plays. So. And they were one of those fast tempo uh, offenses that put a lot of pressure on our defense. But some of it's technical. You know, we got to watch and see how we played at the line of scrimmage, where we're looking back in the backfield and main coverage. Um, but I expect us to be able to get it corrected because we've made a commitment to play main coverage. Okay, two more. Coach, you mentioned playing a lot of players. What goes into the decision to have Leah in the game for the entire game uh, as opposed to getting some rotation at the quarterback position? Well, I don't know if you know, but we only got two scholarship guys at quarterback, and one of them has two years to play one. So we are trying to figure out whether we have the ability to register or not. Number two, watching the game, I didn't think we were playing very well on offense. And there's a rhythm that I wanted to finish the game with. There's a, a style that I wanted us to play to get, to get some confidence going. We had a lot of drops early. I didn't think we executed outside of the quarterback position as well. And so we left our starters in there on offense to, to kind of get going. Coach, you mentioned how much prouder you felt in the second half. Unfortunately, a lot of fans weren't there to see it. You have a nationally televised game against a top 10 opponent coming up on Friday. How do you keep people in the stands and engaged throughout all four quarters without saying, all right, half time, we're up big, let's go home? Yeah, that's uh, out of my uh, decision, right? That's all I can do is put a product on the field that they would want to stay for four quarters. And, you know, I'm going to sit here and tell you, I thought our student section again showed up um, to me. I got a lot of respect for them coming out and supporting us. Um, you know, getting people in here, the one thing I do know about this area is this is a big game that we have an opportunity to uh, kind of define ourselves as a team during the 21 season. And I have the expectation that our fans will be here, they'll be loud, they'll have an impact, and they'll give us the necessary energy to go out and play well, and I'm looking forward to seeing them do that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Well, Dante Demas, Stanley Cater.